very complicated. But, oh, I am so happy to bring up this next guest, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I per, worked with her on The Infinite Monkey Cage, which is a fantastic podcast with Professor Brian Cox and Robin Ince. If you ever get an urge to check that out, it's great. She is a wonderful woman and uh, one of the most important scientist working today. She's the leader of the imaging science team on the Cassini mission. I could go on and on with everything that she's been doing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Carolyn Porco. Thank you, thank you. Good morning everyone and welcome to Reason Rally. Are you happy to be here? Good, because I'm happy to be here. I came here today to lend my support to those who believe like I do, that the only way forward in addressing our problems that we face, whether it be problems in our personal lives, in the governance of our nation, or ensuring the future of our civilization, is not to pray the problems away, but to think the problems away. And what does that mean? It's simple, it's really simple. Just practice respect for the truth, follow logical reasoning, and avail ourselves of the evidence that is gathered through scientific investigation. It's not any more complicated than that. I am a scientist. I have spent my life exploring the planets and the moons and rings in the outer solar system. I've taken pictures of the Earth from billions of miles away. And I was drawn to this life because it was clear to me at a very young age that authority figures, despite their power and their prominence, have no monopoly on the truth. They don't know what's true any more than we do. What ends up being true, I found out, was not the subjective opinion of a priest or the pope or a parent. It is nature herself. It is the physical world that is the final arbiter of the truth and the languages of mathematics and science once we learn them, allow us to decode the physical world to reveal what is absolutely true. And even beyond the physical world, science can objectively delineate the boundaries within which questions like ethics and morality can be debated and decided. And we need to use scientific guidelines in crafting the laws governing our national life if we are to have hope of arriving at the the right answers. How can we possibly make informed decisions about how to conduct our lives unless we are armed with accurate information and unless we understand the way things really are, not the way we hope them to be? Knowledge is power. <clears throat> and if you allow yourself to believe or even worse, to conduct your life based on believing things that are e acutely illogical or even demonstrably untrue, then you have effectively trained yourself to believe anything. And you leave yourself vulnerable to those who will prey upon you because you are gullible. And then the consequences can be dire. And there are some very famous very extreme examples of this, the way that we have been led to believe that we do not need to do anything about climate change is one of them. Many people have voted for those officials who tenaciously have stuck to the idea that climate change was a hoax or that human activities had nothing to do with it, and those voters allowed themselves to be duped. The whole American populace, people all over the world, the world is full of gullible people. I am particularly pained by how such adherence to illogical thinking and to dogma written thousands of years ago encoded in ancient texts is harming women all over the world today. It is women who are bearing the brunt of religious thinking. In the best of cases, women are marginalized and treated as the second class. And in the worst cases, we are denied our basic human rights. We are made slaves. We are bought and sold like property. As children, we are made the victims. We are forced to be the victims of pedophiles and raped and beaten at will. And we are even 
rejected by our families and murdered by our fathers, our brothers, and our neighbors for disobeying their cultural, their religious norms. The more religious a society is, the more it abuses its women. That is so important, I'm going to say it again. The more religious a society is, the more it abuses its women. <clears throat> Do you remember Todd Aiken? He worked in this town. He was a congressman from somewhere in Missouri who said, he actually said, that God has a way to shut down a pregnancy resulting from a legitimate rape. Have you ever heard a more colossally ridiculous statement made, ever? And it was made by someone who was elected to office and worked in this town. When religious people like Todd Aiken can become members of Congress, we know that women are in grave danger. Yet, it is still largely women who care for the family who pass on the traditions, and in doing so, they encourage religion into the future and into their family life. So I'm scratching my head. I'm asking myself, why do women accept these positions? And even worse, why do women encourage their daughters to do the same? Why are there even any religious women left in this country or in the world? Why are they not loudly, angrily revolting against the way of thinking that offers them nothing and puts them at risk. Why? I think there's an answer. I think the answer is that religion is not primarily an ideological phenomenon, it is a cultural phenomenon. And to revolt against the religion of their birth is for many people to cast off their culture and their allegiance to their family traditions. And that is understandably a very difficult and wrenching course of action for them to take. But here's the thing. Because it is cultural, and because women as the center of the family are the fulcrums of culture, it is women who are in the best position to turn this around. Where we have the legal protections to do so, we can teach our children that there is a different way to look at the world and a different way to look at women. There is literally a different way to think. It's one based on reason. It's one based on respect for the truth. It's one based on respect for all of our fellow humans. And it's one that finds no evidence whatsoever for that women are inferior to males. And it finds absolutely no justification for the abuse of one half of the population at the hands of the other. It has been demonstrated when women are given the power over their own lives, tremendously good things happen. Birth rates plummet, poverty is alleviated, and communities prosper. Okay, the message is clear, it's all good. So I'm serious when I say women are the key to getting us to a world ruled by sensible, secular thinking. And we need to take up this challenge. This needs to be our mission. I've heard it said, the American Revolution was all about taking the government out of religion, and the French Revolution was all about taking religion out of government. I hate to break it to you, but the French got it right. Yeah. We need to get religious thinking out of government because it hurts us. We women all over the world, and in this country too, have the most to gain from the world going secular. So let's do this. Start by telling all your children that they all are equally valuable and deserving of respect by everyone around them. That there is danger in wishful thinking and tell them to question everything, especially any philosophy or belief system that would put them in second place. That is a way of thinking in a belief system that is not worth even considering. You know, sometimes all it takes is for someone to validate our thoughts and to tell us, you got it right, 
in order for us to make big changes in our lives. Sometimes all it takes is for someone to give us permission. Well, I'm here to tell you, you have my permission. So women, let's make this right. Let's make it so. Thank you. Hi, hello. Carolyn Porco. Carolyn Porco. That is a great woman to hang with. And uh, um, I guess apropos.